message that uh, the title actually is dropped in my spirit when we uh, had our uh, one of our uh, prayer calls in the morning. So, you know, as we was on the prayer call, it just dropped in my spirit. I said, let me write this down real quick because I had to minister this message during our man-to-man meeting uh, that we have every Wednesday at 5 a.m. Yeah, we get up at 5 a.m. to make sure that we, we talking to the Lord and lifting up our brothers. Big shout out to br- big brother Joe. Amen. So, you know, this is definitely out of my comfort zone when Pastor AJ uh, came to me and said, hey, be prepared to share the word on such and such day. I was like, no. I said, where, where can I run to? <laughs> what can I do? Oh, no. Because I'm comfortable being in the background. I'm comfortable, you know, being uh, in the cut. But you know what? God says, hey, forget about you. It ain't about you today. It's about this word. It's about lifting up the word of God. It's about the people. It's about the souls. So I'm here today excited to bring this word to you guys today. Swimming upstream. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, so what do I mean when I say swimming upstream? I basically broke down those words swimming upstream into two different meanings. When I say swimming, I'm talking about uh, pursuing God. So when I'm swimming, I'm pursuing God. Upstream is a destination, meaning that I'm pursuing God upstream, which is heaven. So swimming upstream is pursuing God till heaven. And keep in mind that we're pursuing God and we can have heaven on earth as well. You know, we, heaven is just not a place that we'll go when we die. Heaven is a place right now that we are in right now. We can have, uh, we can have heaven on earth right now. Amen. And what, what heaven on earth looks like, you know, heaven on earth looks like we're walking in peace. Heaven on earth looks like we're walking in victory. Heaven on earth is looking like we have no care in the world. Amen. So, so this is, this is bear with me. All right. So when I, when I'm saying pursuing God, I'm definitely, uh, you know, saying, uh, swimming upstream, I'm definitely pursuing God. What I, what I got to do is build my relationship up with uh, Father God. You know, this is, this is where uh, we lose it at sometimes. We, we don't build that relationship up. We just go uh, with the flow. We don't really uh, focus on the things of God, even though we say we, that we are a believer. I believe last week, Elder Sedell talked about victory through what Christ did for us on the cross. And I'm here today to talk to about pursuing God and keeping up with his righteous lifestyle. Amen. Amen. So, you know, that, that relationship with God will help us see the attacks of the enemy. It will help us uh, determine uh, what decisions to make. You know, in the past, I've, I've allowed the world to control my decisions. I didn't take authority over anything that came my way. You know, you have to take authority for, for any thought that may come into your head. You got to cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. So if you... If you cast it down, then you have a, a chance to uh, refrain from that sin. Uh, but if you let it cultivate, then that's when you're swimming downstream. So swimming downstream is the opposite of swimming upstream. So, so you know, swimming downstream is heading toward or pursuing sin. So instead of pursuing Christ, you're pursuing sin when you're swimming downstream. When you're doing nothing you still are going downstream because you're just in that water going with the flow, heading down to destruction. So when you're doing nothing, then that's another thing. That's not good either. So you have to actually pursue God and build yourself up so we can function the way that we need to function in this earth. Amen. I had the first scripture here I'm going to reference. My foundation scripture is Matthew 6.33 in the New Living Translation. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Now, when I first uh, became a a partner at a a church, this is one of the first scriptures that I was directed to. When I listened to, when I read this scripture, I really didn't take hold of what it was saying. You know, it said, 
seek the kingdom of God above all else. I was still, you know, even though I believe our Lord and Savior died on the cross for us and we were saved based on his sacrifice for us, uh, and he rose on the third day, uh, and, and, and we were saved by uh, grace through faith, I believe that, but I was not, <laughs> I was not, I was not uh, going to God for everything in my life. You know, I wasn't seeking him. I wasn't submitting my life to him. I was still living the same old way that I've always lived. You know, we talk about you having to, when you become saved, you have to renew your mind. That renewing my mind part didn't, all, didn't catch hold right then and there when I first got saved. So I was saved, but I was still living my own way which uh, does not produce heaven on earth for me. So you have to definitely uh, do everything that the Bible says instead of picking and choosing what you think is going to be uh, what you want to do. You know, because I, you know, the, the, my environment uh, that I grew up in, uh, you know, we, I wasn't thinking about God. You know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't get saved until my, my early 20s. And when I got saved, I still had all the, those years of growing up, growing up without God that was in my mind that I had to wash and, and, and clean and cleanse. So I, I definitely wanted to uh, be a son of God, but I did not have the tools at the time to do so. So I'm trying to get you some tools today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as far as uh, Kingdom Life, Kingdom Life has, a, has declared 2021 as the year of purpose. So this is the year of purpose. We have to purposely, purposely pursue the things of God. We can't take it for granted that uh, we, we don't have to wake up in the morning and pray. We don't have to wake up in the morning to read the word. We don't have to wake up in the morning to, uh, to just uh, speak in the Holy Spirit. We have to do all those things uh, every day so we can protect our minds from the, the, the worries of this world. The world is talking loud nowadays. Uh, it's, it's, growing, it's growing more and more, uh, you know, crazy in this world today. And if we don't counteract what the world is throwing at us, then it may, something may get cultivated in our mind. And if, if that does happen, we may pursue that other thing. We don't want to pursue that other thing because that's going to lead us to destruction. Amen. All right, so the battleground is in our mind. You know, this is where the battle ha happens. We don't have to really do anything physically, but in our mind, we have to make sure that we're following the things of God because, you know, the devil is in our head as well, trying to uh, pursue us or trying to get us to uh, do things that he wants to do. So if we don't have God in our heart, if, we don't, if we're not talking to God every day, those other things, things may get into our mind and sway us off our path. We want to stay on the path to righteousness. Amen? Because if we don't, you know, we are not going to get what God has, us, has for us in the earth. You know, God has already made a plan for us. He already put things in our path that we're supposed to grab onto and receive. But where we get uh, messed up is that we definitely sometimes listen to other outside sources that tries to put an obstacle in our path when we're trying to swim upstream. So we have to navigate through all that and just dodge and weave and make sure that we are heading to our destiny. We got to make sure that we're headed to, to be with our father. And, and the, the way you do that is through relationship. Amen. All right. So how do you build a relationship with Christ? I said it before, we, we have to get to know him. We have to spend time with him. You know, we have to pray. We have to uh, read the word. You know, we have to, you know, just spend time with him like we would any other person. If you met a fine-looking lady out there from North Carolina <laughs> with a nice accent, you got to walk up to her and be like, hey, how you doing? All right. And then you got to do the same thing to Ma. You got to keep on doing it until, until she realizes that, hey, we're getting to know each other so we can build a relationship, you know. Um, if we don't build a relationship, it's going to be su superficial. And that's, and, and that's the kind of relationship I've had with God uh, early on. You know, I had a surface-level relationship with God, which is not 
where you need to be to be able to contract what the darts that the devil throws at you. You know, the devil is working hard to mess up your game. But, you know, we, we are already winners. We already won based on what uh, Christ did on the cross. But we just have to receive that and believe it and walk in it. You know, it's not enough for us just to know what it is. We have to do what it is. Pastor AJ is up here every week giving us some good word, and he can't make you do what he's saying. He, he only can give you the word, but you have to receive it and apply it. Amen? So we have to build our relationship with, with God. We have to um, uh, speak to him through prayer. We have to, you know, speak in the Holy Spirit. That's a perfect prayer, you know, speaking in the Holy, Holy Ghost. Um, we want to get close to him. So scripture number two is James 4.8, New Living Translation. So we want to be close to God. So It says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. Amen? Wash your hands, your sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So see what it says? Your loyalty is divided between uh, God and the world. That was me. You know, I'm, my loyalty was divided. I, all, in my heart, I love the Lord with all my heart. But then lust over here. You know, I love lust. I grew up in lust. Uh, jealousy over here. Anger over there. All these things that's not of God we fall into because we don't pursue God on a daily basis. As soon as you don't pursue him on a daily basis, you, you leave room for the enemy to come in. Amen. So he wants our loyalty. He wants us to, uh, not, he, he doesn't want us to be double-minded. He wants us to be focused on him. So what, whatever we really focus on is what we will end up with. You know, if I focus on a thing, I'm going to get that thing if I, if I really want it. If I pursue that thing, I'm going to get it because I, I want that thing. So I'm going I'm to keep on pushing until I get it. We got to be, you got to have that same kind of mindset when we, 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 uh, when it comes to the things of God, you know, we can't take him for granted. We got to definitely pursue him over and over again until we build our relationship. Amen. When I walk with a service level uh, relationship with God, I didn't know that he was my healer. I didn't know that he provided all my wants. In needs, I didn't know that, you know, he 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 was my provider. I didn't know that I needed to reach out to him for every situation. So I'm out here trying to do stuff on my own. I'm out here trying to handle uh, a baby dying, you know, in my in my life. I had a baby that died. I was there to trying to handle that on my own. I was there trying to handle my finances on my own. You know, I was I wanted to pay tithes. My heart said pay tithes, but I waited till after my bills were paid to say, okay, I got this much left. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into the tithe bucket. That's out of order. You had you had to pay your tithes first. When when I realized some of those tools, my life started to uh, to, to get back on track. You know, get back on the path. Amen. So I didn't have the time. I didn't make the time to spend time with God. You know, I had all these other things to do. You know, we, we put everything else higher than God, you know. And if we had God sitting there looking at us, we'd probably been like, oh, yeah, I'm, my bad guy, I'm going to do you first. But since we can't see him, we think everything else is more priority than God. We got it twisted. We got to change our mindset. We got it twisted. So we, we got to put that same time we put on other things towards God. I was always busy. I got to do this. I got to do that. But when it came to Sunday, Sunday, Sunday uh, football, I watched football from 1 p.m. to 12 midnight all day to watch my Eagles lose. Good to see you, Miss Jean. <laughs> Good to see you, Miss Jean. She's my Eagles buddy. My Eagles lose, but they won one, one year. But that's seems seems so long ago. Um. <laughs> But uh, 
So we, we have to, you know, pursue God. We got to pursue God and, and to take it another level when we're in pursuit. And this is really what changed it for me is, is when I started fasting and praying. You know, the first time I fasted, I heard from God. God spoke to me, and I went to tell everybody what he said, and they was like, yeah, right. <laughs> but, but I heard his voice clearly. And I've been trying to hear his voice ever since. I haven't heard it since, but I'm still pursuing him because one day I'm going to hear his voice. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't just speak with an audible voice. He speaks through his word. He speaks through other people. He speaks through your pastor. He speaks through me. Amen? So we got to listen to the voices that we're hearing and apply those things that we are hearing. that's good. You know, some, sometimes you got to determine which what's good and what's not good because we don't know the people that we're talking with sometimes. I, I know this from going out to Southside Plaza and speaking to people about Jesus. And, and I'm thinking they have the like-minded way of thinking like I do. But as soon as I speak to them and they respond, they on some other stuff. Some stuff that's way over there. I'm like, well, I never heard of that. <laughs> I'm like, God, why am I always getting the people that's over here? I need, I need to talk to somebody that's like-minded so I can just have an easy, a easy way to go. But amen. But, you know, I think God put me in those positions because he's trying to grow me up. Pastor AJ is trying to grow me up. He sent me up here, and I, I came up here regardless, you know, because I think Elder Sedell said, if you, don't, if you didn't want to do it, do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway, you know, until, until you know, because it's not me anyway. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. So why do we need a relationship with Jesus Christ? We need a relationship with Jesus Christ because we are building up our own spiritual man, our own spirit man. So we, we have to build, uh, build our relationship with Jesus Christ so we can build ourselves up. You know, we, we also are building that relationship so, we, so we'll know that we can't do it all by ourselves. You know, if we don't have a relationship with someone, we're not going to ask them to help me do whatever. No. But people with you, the people that you do have a relationship with, you're going to talk to them, and, 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 and the ideas will go back and forth, and then we can get a clear path of where the destination needs to be based on our conversation. So that's the same with, with our Father God. We have to be comfortable to ask them for anything that we need and to, to talk to him and listen to what he's saying to us and receive it. You know, sometimes he talks to us. And we don't receive. We still do what we want to do and end up in a puddle somewhere when we, he wanted us to go this way. Um, so it's, it's all about what we do with the information that we get, the battles in, in, in your mind. Amen. We need to depend on Jesus to guide our lives. All right. Scripture number three. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. New Living Translation. I like the New Living Translation. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. He said it right there. Then won't then then you, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants you to to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit man wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. I have good intentions to, you know, follow God and, and be blessed and everything, but I get sidetracked because I, I, I want my intentions also is to mess with this lady over here. My intentions is to uh, be, a, a, be a masculine man and not let anybody talk to me any kind of way. So you have, you have good intentions to do right, but the devil sometimes get in, and if you're not focused, he'll sway you to act like a fool. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what it is. You're acting like a fool. You know, you got you to gotta live this lifestyle like God laid it out. He laid it out in those books in the Bible. He laid it out, you know, it, he, he, he'll talk to you. You know, he's talking to you. You have to listen. And the only way you'll you'll um, lose if you if you give up. Amen. So the difference between 
swimming upstream versus downstream. So if I'm doing a comparison, if I live, or if I swim upstream, I'm going to be living in peace. But if I swim downstream, I'm going to live in chaos. Amen? If I'm swimming upstream, I'm going to live in abundance. But if I'm swimming downstream, I'm going to live in lack. If I swim upstream, I'm finding my purpose. If I'm swimming downstream, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm living my own way. I'm, I'm doing the things that I want to do. If I swim upstream, the path can be difficult, but I have help. Jesus is, is, Jesus is there to help me. If I swim downstream, I do not have any help. It's going to be, it's going to be still difficult, but I don't have any help. If I swim upstream, I'm going to end up in heaven. If I swim downstream, I'm going to end up in hell. Amen. So the point that I'm trying to make, and I'm getting to the point, <laughs> is that we have to pursue God above all else. We have to build our relationship with God above all else. Because if we don't, sin can crack in our armor that we have. Sin separates us from our Father God. Sin leads us to a place where we don't want to be. It, it starts off with a little sin, then you end up way over there. You, don't, you never know that this small little thing that you did was going to take you way over there. And next thing I know, I'm dying. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm busted and disgusted. So, Maintain those small cracks in your, in your foundation to make sure that you don't end up where you don't want to be. Amen? Amen? Make a decision today to live for God. You know, this, this is the balance in your mind. Make that decision. You have to make a decision uh, throughout your life. Every day, every minute that I'm going to follow God. If we don't, we can fall and slip. If we fall... There's no con condemnation. We could just get back up. But, you know, we don't know the day or the hour that Jesus is coming back. And we don't want to be on the wrong side of heaven when that day comes. So repent. Repent now. You know, if you have anything going on, repent. Turn around. And once you do that, find somebody else that you can turn around to. Amen. All right. Last scripture. Isaiah 41, 10 to 13. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. See all your angry enemies lie there confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in a vein for those, a vine for, for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. For I, told, for I hold you by your right hand. I, the Lord, your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. He's here. Amen. Amen. He's here to help me. He's here to help you. He's here until he comes back to help us. So all we need to do is have his back. He has our back. Let's have his back. Let's pursue God until heaven. Let's swim upstream. That's all. <laughs>